Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we've got a brand new piece of software to introduce to the world. And this one comes from the creator of the popular voxel application, Magic of Voxel. Now, if you've never heard of Magic of Voxel, I've covered it a number of times on this channel. If you're interested in staying up to date in the latest and greatest in the world of game development, do hit that subscribe button. But anyways, Magic of Voxel is probably the editor for creating voxel-based graphics. It's an exceptional program, and I highly recommend you go ahead and check it out. It is available. It is a completely free download for Windows and Mac. I do believe it will run uh, in Wine on Linux, but please do not quote me on that. Now, the sad thing is, after many years of free updates, so there's no complaints from this guy, uh, the, the developer, I'm going to say F. Tracy, I have no idea if that's actually how that's pronounced, uh, he basically stopped development in September. September of 2020. Well, the good news is we now know what he was working on next. So we have another member in the Magicka family to announce, and that is Magicka CSG. Now, this is a really interesting application. There's not a lot of information out there, by the way, so you're going to be playing mostly trial and error. It is currently right now only available for Windows, and I actually believe it is only available uh, and tested on a couple of GPUs. So if you have trouble with it, uh, don't be incredibly shocked. It was Win64 only, requires OpenGL 4.6, 2 gigabytes of GPU RAM, which is basically every GPU available now. Uh, tested on AMD and NVIDIA, but pretty high-end cards. So if you have problems with it, do not be surprised. This is a 0.0.0 release. And I gotta say that is a first for me. Uh, but the entire idea behind this one is it's sort of like meta ball modeling. If you remember back in the day, you're basically doing Boolean modeling uh, with primitives. And it's using something called signed distance fields. Now I'm not gonna get into the math at all. First off, I'm terrible explaining math, but the nice thing is I found this excellent article that will do a good job for you. But in some ways, you can think of sine distance field as a way of representing the hull around the shape. Think about it like a, a voxel wrapper around a mathematical equation. And by using this, you can create these Boolean shapes uh, that you can work with in 3D. So that's essentially what Magicka CSG is using. So if you want to get in here and learn about uh, the math and the science behind sine distance fields, uh, this article is excellent. Also, by the way, sine distance fields aren't just used for this kind of thing. Uh, for example, Godot 4, the new version, is going to be using uh, sign distance field to do uh, real-time global illumination, as an example. Uh, so, let's jump in and take a look. And once again, this is Windows only, uh, and if you've ever used Magic of Voxel, you're going to be immediately at home. There is a lot of commonality between the two releases. Uh, you can see here you've got a modeling ver view and a rendering view. The renderer is pretty straightforward. You've got a lot of actual control over the camera. I think a lot of the rendering stuff was carried over from Magic of Voxel. Uh, now, the downside is, from what I have have seen, you can save your render, but I found no way to actually export out uh, your uh, your 3D object yet, which is a bit unfortunate. But if you want, you can go ahead, uh, you can save it, and you can render it, uh, but that's kind of the extent of that. I haven't found uh, an actual way to do an export as of yet, which is a little bit unfortunate. But anyways, 0.0.0, .0, .0 release, and give it some time. So we're going to go ahead, we're looking to look at the modeling side of things, and let's start a new scene. So let's click that little button right there, and this is what you start with. Basically, it's a rounded off cube. You're going to notice you have a number of different strokes here. Uh, you can control how it is uh, blended. Uh, the way the shell or the, the, I think that's the density of the shell. Uh, the, basically, I think the amount of tessellation around the shape, but don't quote me on that. Uh, you can make holes in things. So like there, you can see now it is hollow, uh, like so. Um, you can bevel the edges and so on. So you can start with these basic primitives like this. And as I mentioned earlier on, this is basically just like Boolean modeling. So over here, you see you have a, a series of strokes. We can go ahead and add another stroke in, or you can quick click this guy right here, and that will create another object in the world. So this time I'm going to make it a cylinder like that, and now we're going to go ahead and rotate our cylinder uh, like so-ish. All right, there we go. Uh, you can scale like that, you can scale like that, and like that. So there you see, you can start creating these compound objects, so you, and you've got a number of different options. So in addition to uh, like in this particular point, we are doing unions right here. So we could also do a subtraction like so. So what you're doing is basically cutting the shapes out from each other. Uh, intersection, so that's where the two shapes collide. So you can see how you can quickly use these things to create some really cool and interesting shapes. And then you, you basically just kind of keep going. So then if we need to do something else, we basically add another shape in. 
Uh, we can make this one um, a sphere, like so. So there we've created, I don't know, an atomic bomb. There you go. So then uh, once you've got all of your strokes together, uh, you've also got layers. I have no idea what layers do, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I think it's just a way of organizing a bunch of strokes so I could create another stroke layer, I'm guessing. Uh, you, you have um, some color support. Again, this is where we kind of get into this is completely and utterly undocumented at this point in time. Uh, so you're going to have to play around and try and figure out exactly how to use it. But essentially, uh, it's kind of like a Boolean based primitive modeler using sine distance field shapes or like these um, voxely hulls around uh, predefined shapes. So you define you know, your primitives up here, and it's gonna create this shrink wrap version over top of it that then can be used uh, with other shapes in these four different operators. Oh, here's your color right there. So you can sign the colors right there. Um, so you got a palette down here if you wanna go ahead and assign those colors in. And then when you're done and happy with what you've got, you switch over to the rendering tab and you can create render. You've got control over uh, the lighting, where the sun is, the intensity of the sky, the, and so on. Uh, how things should bounce, the rendering models that it should work with, and so on and so forth. Again, the downside to this tool right now, uh, so here is where you can um, your projects are organized. Here is your uh, layout of the thing, uh, but there is only the ability, so here is where you can actually export things. So you can export out the palette as a PNG file, or you can import a palette. That's this guy down here. So if we want, we could switch a palette in. So we could bring one of these guys in like so and bring in that working palette. You can export the material, and then you can export the renderer and the camera. I don't know of a way to actually get your object model out yet. It'd be awesome to have something like an OBJ exporter or something to that effect, uh, but it does not appear to exist as of yet. So hopefully that does get added, because as of it stands right now, this is an interesting new project and nothing more. You can't really use it for uh, that much if you can't get your content out. So the only way you're gonna get out of this right now is by doing a, a you know, a 2D render. So that kind of does limit its usefulness for right now. But hopefully in time uh, that it gets changed, we start getting export functionality and it becomes more and more useful. By the way, there are a uh, couple of uh, examples in here. The one you saw in the, uh, um, the title graphic for this particular thing. And then there's also this guy right here. And again, if you go and look at the hierarchy of it, it is just a series of strokes. All of these things go together uh, kind of in in order uh, to to build this guy right there. So at, at a conceptual level, it's a pretty straightforward thing working with sine distance field. Now, why would you want to work this way? Well, one, it's actually fairly intuitive. This is where that uh, CSG or um, constructive solid geometry. It, it's a way of doing in, in the quick level modeling, for example, of you know just adding and subtracting shapes together. But it's also a good way for making uh, very mechanical organic shapes, if that makes sense. If you've got you know, most things in life, even mechanical things, don't have perfectly flat edges. They're, you know, smoother or rounder, but they are quite often built out of rather simple primitives. And if you're trying to model that kind of stuff, for example, if you're trying to model a mecha or um, something similar, robots or, um, you know, maybe even cars or vehicles, uh, this is a good approach. You could also use this to rapidly do base meshes that you then, you know, paint over or add detail to or sculpt or whatever. Now, unfortunately, once again, at this point in time, there is no export, at least that I can find because uh, again, literally zero documentation on this guy. So uh, who knows? You can save as um, their file format, this MCSG file format. And I don't know um, how hard it would be to make an exporter that takes that file format. But as of right now, there is limited actual real world use. But I've got to imagine with the way that Magic of Voxel turned out, that magic of CSG is also going to turn into a very cool project. So this basically, you can think of it as a really accessible uh, CSG or primitives-based modeling tool. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.